Is the housing market going to crash in 2021? I am so tired of watching YouTubers and all these individuals out there trying to talk about a subject they know absolutely nothing about. You know, as myself being a top 10 loan officer for the last 16 years, I am on the front lines because guess what? Before house sales close, people go ahead and get pre-approved for that loan. So I'm at the very front of the line seeing on the front line of the war what's going to happen. And I gained a lot of attention last year when I came on social media saying, hey guys, don't believe it. COVID's not going to kill house prices. I guarantee you house prices are going to go up. And I can't, I got hundreds of DMs and comments telling me I'm an idiot. And guess what? I'm not trying to be right in everybody's face, but guess what? I was right. And you know why I was right? Because data doesn't lie. And I'm obsessed with numbers and data. I was been a mathlete my whole life. I was right then and I'm going to be right about this. So I want you guys to follow along with me on a couple things. So let's look at the data that just recently came out from the Fed. So Right now, there's a total of about 982,000 homes for sale, residential homes for sale all across the country. Everyone was hoping by May we were going to see a pickup. Oh, all these people were going to start having to sell their houses and all these things were going to happen. We're going to see a massive inventory influx. Zillow just went ahead and put an article out and guess what? None of that happened. Okay, so what do I think is going to happen? Let me look at the numbers and I'm going to let you guys be the judge yourself. So right now, in total, we have 900,000 homes for sale in the United States, roughly about a three month supply. So in a healthy market, you want six months supply of homes. Now, what does that mean? That means the amount of homes that are currently listed for sale, the amount of buyers in a normal marketplace will take six months to go ahead and acquire all those homes or run out of inventory, right? So we're at 50% of what we need to be for supply. And everyone says, well, Brian, we have all these people in forbearance and foreclosure. When all those things come and hit, it's just gonna happen just like it did in 2008. Well, let me just tell you a couple things on why you're completely wrong. Let's just look at these two scenarios. 2008, 40% of all homes purchased in 2008 were investment properties, 40%. And guess what happens? When you run into tough times, do you get rid of your primary home or your investment home? You get rid of your investment home. So we had a massive difference of the type of people that were buying, whereas today, as of the latest numbers of 2020 that I could find on the type of occupancy that was purchased, you're roughly about 10 or 11% of investment properties were purchased. The rest of the homes that were purchased were either primary homes or a second primary home, like you know, a vacation type home, not something you would rent out. So we have a completely different segment of types of homes. The other thing that happened is guess what? The average credit score between these two situations, then the average credit score was a 661. The average credit score from Fannie Mae at the end of 2020 was over a 750. Let me just tell you something. Credit score matters about the quality of a buyer more than anything else. I've been in the mortgage industry for 16 years. It is 100% true. You can call me whichever you want to call me about it, but I'm sorry. Somebody with a 660 credit score is not as credit worthy of a buyer and will not make the same payments on time as somebody that has proven with the 750. It is not lie. It is not being judgmental. It's a simple fact. Your credit score shows that you did not make your monthly payments on time and you have a history of doing that. A 751 does. So we have a much, much better borrower at today. Then guess what happened in 2008? The average loan to value, the loan compared to the value of the home was over 80%. Do you know what it is today? Under 60%. So we got 40% equity. The average person right now in the United States is sitting with around 40% equity. Think about that. That's a $300,000 loan on an estimated $500,000 purchase price. Whereas back then, the average house that it was worth 500, they owed over $400,000 at that time. Completely different environments. Now, in 2008, we were roughly sitting before all those foreclosures hit, we were sitting at a total supply of houses on the market at over a 12 month supply. So think about that. Six months is the perfect average. So we already had more houses than we even had or needed to have before all the crazy foreclosures started happening because they overbuilt. Now, what'd they do? They screwed up. From 2009 to 2019, we built on average of half the houses we needed to build. We were averaging about 900,000 single family homes being built per year between 2009 and 2019 versus over 1.5 million houses during the previous time. We screwed up. Why'd we screw up? Because builders ran out of money. We had a credit crunch. You had permitting, you had labor issues. We had all these things that we didn't build enough houses because we didn't need to because we had this massive supply. But guess what happens when you stop building for so long? Guess what? You run into supply constraints and that's what we're dealing with now. So just comparing that once again, we had lower credit borrowers back then who had less equity, far more houses on the market before that even crashed compared to today. Excellent borrowers, tons of equity in their home, and we are 
a three month supply of houses when we need to be at a six month. So now let's bring in your foreclosure question. Right now as of Black Knight's most recent data that came out in May, right now in 2021, there was approximately 1.8 million first mortgages that are in a, what they call a serious delinquency status, meaning they believe that they will not be brought current or they will not be able to be pulled out of forbearance. So that's 1.8 million. Now, very big change from 2008 to today. There is very, very strict foreclosure laws. Very, very strict. A lender has to do everything they possibly can to make sure that the borrower does not have the ability to repay their mortgage before they even think about foreclosing. Now, question for you. Of those 1.8 million, what did I just establish? They're sitting on a lot of equity, right? A lot of equity. Two to three times as much equity as back in 2008. So let's say, let's play the devil's advocate. And let's say of those 1.8 million houses, okay, let's say a third of them foreclose. Now why they would get foreclosed when you have that much equity is beyond me, but let's play the devil's advocate. Because back during the foreclosure period of time, of all the homes that went seriously delinquent, about 50% of them ended up in foreclosure. The other 50% were worked out on modification. So let's use 33% now because it's a good number. So what's 33% of 1.8 million? That's 600,000 homes, okay? So 600,000 homes. Say all those 600,000 homes, say they hit the market over the next 90 to 120 days, right? What do we establish at the beginning of the video? We have a what? We have a three month supply of houses. How many houses do we have on the market right now? We have just under a million houses for sale. How many do we need? Approximately in the neighborhood of 1.8 million, okay? We take 600,000 houses of all foreclosures, and let's say they hit over a three month period of time. Okay, right? 600,000 houses times 900, or add to 900,000 houses we currently have. What is that number, right? That's about 1.5, 1.6 million, okay? What's a six month supply in a stable market? 1.8 million houses. So even if you took every foreclosure, we all happened, a third of all the houses that are delinquent, all went to foreclosure and were a distress sale and they all hit the market. We're not even at a six month supply of houses. Whereas in the foreclosure crisis, we were far exceeding a six month supply before the foreclosures even started. Now, why do I not think we're going to have a housing crash? Is because one, we need houses. Please, I don't mean to be mean to people, but please, if you cannot afford to make the payments on your home, sell your house, we need the inventory. We need the inventory and it is not coming. Then, what also people completely forgot that's the difference between now and then, as I've talked about before, between 1988 and 1996, we had the largest birth rate ever in United history here in the United States. Guess what somebody born in 1988 is turning today? Here, they're turning 33 years old. What happens when somebody's 33? That's the average age of a first time home buyer, okay? So we have next five or six years, we have the largest group of people born ever in the United States all reaching first time home buying age, coming after a building shortage where we built half as many homes as we should for 10 years of time. Why we have a period of time where people are now being able to work remote and who's able to work remote? The very kids that are reaching first time home buying age. I'm telling you from the front lines, the vast majority of my clients that are first time home buyers do not live in the area that they are buying in. What I call is a fringe market. They're working in LA where their job is. They don't want to live in downtown LA. They are buying in Orange County or in Riverside County. Okay. If they are living up in San Francisco, they can work remote. Okay. They are buying in San Diego. If they work in San Diego and they don't want to be in San Diego, they are buying in Scottsdale and Phoenix area, okay? That is what these people are going ahead and doing. So how do we fix the problem, okay? Problem is, is people say house prices are getting too expensive. Yes, I do think they're getting more expensive, but it just depends on your market. Because Riverside County, it's not expensive for people in Orange County. It's not expensive at all. So you guys have to understand that we will not see a housing crash in 2021 or 2022. The buyer segment and the quality of buyers does not allow it and the amount of foreclosures, even if one third of all the houses that is potentially facing foreclosure all hit the market and they all hit within the next 90 days, we do not have nearly enough supply. Okay, cool, we got enough, we got enough supply for three months. Okay, now what happens next? So please, when you guys are gonna be doing your housing analysis, don't listen for people that aren't into this industry. I funded $3 billion of loans over the last six, or last 16 years. I know what's happening, I know what I'm talking about where it comes to this. Now I can't predict the future five years out, but I'm telling you right now over the next two years, the demand is there to more than engulf any supply that will come from any type of foreclosures or forbearances. So you make the judge, I've made my answer.